again. Allah said, we will make sure you enter fire on the day of Qiyamah. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرًا And that is so easy for Allah. So the first akhlaq is what? It's akhlaq amongst ourselves. You owe me one shilling and you are capable to give it back. I was telling people that side, this is a baytul mal. Rather it is money, baytul mal. You are eating the money of Imam Zaman. No blessing and no barakah. Rasulullah made it very clear. إن الميتة مغلول في كبره أو صاحب الدين ورواية سيد he said the one who owes and he fails to pay he will be chained in his cover up until the moment the debt is settled first your akhlaq number two if we truly want to become blessing wherever we are معرفة التباع البشرية we need to understand each other we need to understand people. And this is what Islam invites us to do. But if you want to bring development, we need to know each other. We have a Bohari community here. We have Ismaili community here. The best way to bring progress is to know each other very well. Once we know one another, then we are able to do something very meaningful. But today you find some mu'mineen. When you try to do interview or interview, you get backlash. People attack you. Myself personally, I've been attacked so many times. But this is the way. Al Ilbay did the same. Imam Murida did the same. Rasulullah did the same. In Medina, when he arrived, he ensured that the constitution of Medina was drafted. And in that constitution, there is a clause Christians, Jewish, Muslims should live peacefully side by side. So, number two, let's know each other. We don't know each other. I was talking recently in my speech. I said, when a guest comes to our community, nobody even bother to greet that guest. We are always in the cocoon of our people. Gone are those days. If you want to live peacefully, go out. Let the youth interact. Let the gentlemen interact. Let our women interact with their women. Let's get the beauty of what they have. And let's share the beauty of what, they are, what we have to them. This is the only way to prepare for the reappearance of awaited Savior. Hey, to prepare for Mama Zaman is not just saying. It's action. Number three. We need to respect one another. One line. Whatever it takes. Whoever you meet, respect. Habibi, if you are sitting next to me and I do not respect you and I have billions of reservations against you, how on earth will I respect someone out there? And I mentioned this, those who of you were in Mombasa, you heard I mentioned this on Friday. I said, today you go to Isna Ashari. So there is this Isna Ashari who is jobless, employed. So Allah, I will never employ Isna Ashari. Isna Ashari, no ways. Habibi, if you do not trust Isna Ashari, you trust no one is naturally a cheap. We need to respect one another. That is very, very important. And then number four, let's try to stay away from pointing fingers to people's faults. And this same in marriage. Because Rasulullah said, al intikada turis al adawa when you always want to say wrong, 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 eventually it will cause enmity. So if you want to live peacefully and become blessed, try as much as, don't do too much Amr bil Marufa. Have a limit to it. It's so important within the religion of Islam. And then number five, is what? Try as much as you can not to be negative always. You see how many people are negative? There are some people, even you bring a malaika to them, they will tell you it's not malaika. You also don't see, see something good in this lie? I don't see. Because Imam Amir is telling us, when you are someone who is positive, people around you find positive energy. And if you are negative, people find negative energy around you. So it's so important you are positive. 
And if you are positive, wallah, you will achieve more. And then the last one, but not least. If you truly want to become blessed, then don't stop learning about Allah and Ahl al -Bad. Today, many people come and argue. But when you go down deep, you realize that they've not read anything about Ahl al -Bayt, I am saying, if tonight is the night of Sayyida Zainab, before you come to the majlis of Zainab, Learn something about Zainab so that the one on the member will not take you for granted. Today, why do you fight all over the world? Because the audience don't read. They only depend on member. Smarting, we clash, we fight. Ready to eat each other. Make Zainab proud by pledging to Allah and said, I'm going to start reading about Ahlul Bayt alayhim as And in conclusion, brothers and sisters, especially to my brother or brothers who are getting married, marriage is the most beautiful thing. Wallahi. It's an amazing thing that everyone will wish. At least, through marriage, it's easy to go to Jannah. But it can also be a daunting task. I'm definitely, you receive so many advice, I'm sure, about that. But naturally, you cannot implement all those advices. What is important is mutual respect in marriage. Mutual respect. You are not superior over your wife and vice versa. You are one single existence. Respect her in the way you approach her and vice versa. That is a very, very important. Number two, try not to ignore your wife or your husband. Men are good at that. Especially with the world of social media. A person may sit busy with social media. Ah, oh, okay. Mm, okay. This woman is a manat in your hand. And you will be questioned about her on the day of Qiyamah. Some of us men, we are hiding behind the culture and doing zulm to our wives. Wallahi. You know, if there is one zulm that can make things difficult for all of us, is how we treat our wives. Rasulullah said, you made her lawful to you through the name of Allah. Treat her also through the name of Allah. So don't ignore. Pay attention. Number three. Be careful of third party interference. Sometimes mother-in-law, father-in-law interfere. After marriage, don't steal mommy's boy, mommy's boy, mommy's boy. You want to go to Dubai, let him call my mother. The girl, man, you want to spend something, no, let him ask my father. La. Fathers, mothers, interference is not allowed. Monitoring is allowed. You are allowed to monitor, but you are not allowed to interfere. Rasulullah monitored Amir al muminin and Bibi. But he never interfered. Some parents are interfering. You monitor them to ensure that they are on the right track. But you cannot interfere. Even if you live in one house, there's nothing wrong with that. Your life is your life. First one year is one year to learn and understand each other. She will never be hundred percent. You will never be hundred percent. But if you understand marriage is ibadah, it is to take you to Allah. I promise you, you will be successful in dunya and akhirah. But if you do not understand that, it's a problem. And lastly, many people complain in our communities. Really, when you go out the world. 
Youth are not coming to programs. Youth, youth. Why? Lecture boring. Program boring. This boring. That boring. You know what I respond? I totally understand a speaker should not be boring. And a speaker should not be repeating too much. I totally agree. 100%. And a speaker should not be long. I hope I'm not long eh, tonight. But one of the major philosophy of marriage is for your marriage to become a means and vehicle to bring you to Allah. But you see, the more people get married, the more they stay away from the mosque. Wa min ayatihi Allah said. Min ayatihi. There are two methods or ways of knowing Allah. Internal way and external way. Internal way of seeking proximity and external way of seeking proximity. One of the excellent internal way of seeking proximity is marriage. Allah. Marriage should be a vehicle. So if you get married today and your attendance or salat is weak, by next month we should see difference. Wallahi. Because Rasulullah asked Amir al muminin how is your wife? He said, Ni'ma la'awni ala ta'a. said, blessing of Allah be on this assistant who made me more obedient to Allah. Meaning Fatima alayhi salam made Amir al muminin more obedient to Allah. So therefore, really, this is a challenge. Our marriage should be a vehicle to prepare for the reappearance of Imam Zaman. Our marriage should be a vehicle to serve our community. Wallahi. Our marriage should not be a tool to take us away from Allah and to take us away from our communities. No matter how bad you may think the community may be, Wallahi, the goodness of the community are higher than the bad of it. So therefore, use this marriage to seek Allah. Seek Allah. Yearn for Allah. Cry for Allah. When Rasulullah asked me, Fatima, I am proposing Ali for you. What do you think? What was the response of Fatima? Allah and his messenger pleased with that. Rasulullah was asking her. And she said, if Allah and you are pleased, then fine. So therefore, my brothers and my sisters, after the nikah of tonight, the first thing you need to do when you go out, I know you are busy, it's a very special night, no doubt. Go there, make sajida, and thank Allah. It's sunnah of the Prophet. Once they all leave you, first thing, sajida shukur. Second, look at your parents, your father and mom. Kiss their hand and thank them. It's sunnah of Rasulullah. Kiss their hand, thank them. You are now going to understand the meaning of being a father and mother. So Rasulullah encouraged, kiss the hand, thank your father and mother. They squeezed water out of stones to make you who you are today. And you are going to have your own house. Number three, give sadaqah. Give sadaqah to ask Allah to intervene on your behalf in this journey. It's going to be a long journey. There are ups and downs in that journey. But bring Allah on board and you will find beauty in everything. And the last but not least. The first thing you need to do after all this, pray to Rakat Salah. And I'm sure you know the du'a. As Maulana Sayyid, they've taught you the du'a. If you have a khair, may Allah let the khair spread in this family. If there is any shar, may Allah take over away the shar from us. I thank you so much, Mu'minin. We are here in this community tonight for a mission. And that mission is to invite each and every one of you, whoever is here, young and old, to partner with us from UK in sharing Thawab al Jariya. We are in the process of building a mosque and Imam Bala in Birmingham. Those of you who have been to Birmingham, you've seen the center. It's too tight. We are desperate in need of a place. Wallahi. Some of the boys from here and girls, they are studying there. 
we are desperate in need of a place. And there is no better night to plead with each and every one of you. There is nothing small. I believe if you give even one shilling, one Tanzanian shilling with Baraka, that will bring some million somewhere else. We need your help in the name of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. Loan Allah. And I believe in saying trade with Allah. Tonight, if something out towards the building of our new mosque in Birmingham. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will bring a lot of blessings in your life. After the Madlis, as you go out, there are people out there, gents and ladies side. Whatever you have, just give. Don't worry about it. Just give in the name of Allah. That will be thawab al jariya for you in dunya and akhirah. And I thank Haj Azim and his team for giving us this opportunity. And Africa Federation Haj Shabir and his team. May Allah bless you and increase us in the ma'rifah of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam. Wa akhir da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.